Shut up and sit down. I recently found myself in a nightmare endgame diplomacy situation where I was surrounded by Brother Board in Germany, Captain Meme in Russia, and the Village Idiot in Italy. These are some of the best diplomacy players in the world and I was the poor schmo who drew Austria. But I learned a lot from these high caliber players and I want to share with you some of that learning. This year, diplomacy has experienced a renaissance of growth with new players joining through virtual platforms. This video will serve as a hub to get you to some of the best writing, YouTubing, and podcasting about the game. I'll rank them in order of how they finished in the recent Media Wars game, link you to what I think are their best posts about this game, and then connect you to some other high-quality diplomacy resources to help you improve your game. Thanks for joining us at Legendary Tactics. As the world's leading gunboat player, Brother Board has earned his stripes. He very nearly won the solo in this game, and all the players in the game agreed that he played a first-rate game. Links to some of the techniques that Brother Board used in the Media Wars game are in the comments, and I'll put all of the links in this video down in the comments so you can get to those articles. But I'd like to point you to the solo win tip number three. He writes about getting strong without getting scary. This is subtle, higher-level diplomacy at its best. He names different types of players, the diversionary tactician, the homewrecker, the hostage taker, and the revenge seeker. He also teaches you how to increase your strategic power without capturing centers. It's brilliant. Brother Board is the caliber of player who can coach and mentor newer players, and for good reason. All the links that I mentioned in this video are posted below. Next we've got Captain Meme. He's a skilled commentator for the DBN, and he's got some great blind commentaries posted on the DBN. But personally, I love his creative approach to designing diplomacy puzzles on his YouTube channel, Diplostrats, and I hope he creates more of these in the future. Captain has an education in mathematics, and you really see how he applies mathematical thinking to this game. His specialty? Stalemate lines. He's written his dissertation on the topic. The Gug Gambit is his most popular puzzle, but I'd encourage you to check out the artillery arms scenario where you take on the role of a small power, Turkey, trying to make a draw happen so you can be part of the win. It includes some negotiation and some tactical plays. Next up, in the third position, we have the Village Idiot and Jeff Heyman, who represented the briefing. The briefing is a weekly threat assessment in the diplomacy community. Humble the Heap is the uh, man who organized and, and founded that. Its champions were both very skilled. Vi is currently ranked 33rd out of 19,460 players on web diplomacy. He's also the only player to have ever topped both the play dip and web dip ranking systems, and he's also held both of these simultaneously. This might be why Captain Meme said, we need to murder him as fast, as quickly, and efficiently as possible in fall of 1905. Fortunately, he came into the game with my Austrian presence looming large, and he didn't really get a foothold. However, the article that you absolutely have to read by Vi is called Advanced Diplomacy Maneuvers. It's on Brotherboard's blog. A version of it also appears in the briefing. He gives a really great snapshot of all the plays you need to know, like an intentional retreat and disband, or how to exploit the beleaguered garrison rule. All very useful if you're trying to become a higher level player. Jeff Heyman also represented the briefing, a weekly threat assessment, and he wrote a great article called Trophy Hunting, where he looks at what players' motivations are in a game. His ideas on staying out of the line of fire early are spot on. Let's move to our next content creator, Zachary Moore from the DBN. So he's actively involved in the Diplomacy Broadcast Network as well as the Diplomacy Tournament Circuit as a player, director, and behind the scenes of the DBN. All of the tournament coverage, including full game analysis, is on their channel. Brandon Fogel has even written software for the analysis of these games. Diplomacy really seems to be thriving through the COVID era, and with platforms like Discord and Backstabber, this game has a new lease on life, and the DBN has seen and is embracing that new momentum. While all of the game analyses are great if you're trying to improve your game, it's really worth watching the Weasel Moot Championship game. Zach plays as Turkey, and the result is a little bit unusual. They're moving to a style on the DBN where they interview players throughout the game, and this adds a lot of depth to the analysis. It's great, you should check it out. Next up, our content creator Go Horns Go, or Ed Sullivan, is a player you'll see around Discord, playing in most of the tourneys, and he's a really colorful personality to play with if you've ever had the chance to join him in a match. If you watch the Weasel Moot Championship that I suggested above for the DBN, I also suggest that you might want to check out the game that Ed played against John Anderson to get a full picture of the path to the final game. 
He interviews John and they freely discuss the backstory on the path to becoming a champion at Weaselmoot this year. Ambi and his podcasting partner Kaner bring their passion for good beer and diplomacy together on the Diplomacy Games podcast. They've got 77 episodes and counting, and each of them run from one to three hours. Tons of listening time there for you if this is if beer and diplomacy are a passion for you too. My favorite of their episodes features an interview with Harry Turtledove. He's an alternate history author and avid diplomacy player. A few hours of your time will reward you with a wide range of sometimes very disparate th threads, but ultimately a very good listen. Now, getting away from the Media Wars game, I wanted to choose some other content creators who over the years have produced some excellent coverage of the game. And David Hood is a longtime player who has written extensively on the game on just about every subject. He's featured on Deadline News on the DBN, and he's a very unassuming supporter of the game who is passionate to see this hobby grow. I've recently been in touch with David about statistics on openings in the game. In the Diplomacy World zine on page 17, he has an article called Opening, Who Does What and How Does It Go? He breaks down recent tournament statistics to see the effectiveness of various openings. And he'll be holding a panel discussion on the DBN to examine this in more detail. Our next content creator is actually a resource that you'll find. It's called the Library of Diplomacy Openings, where you can find out the names of your opening and see how it's best played. Just plug in your move set, and it will tell you what opening you're using and the relative merits of each. This is a really great tool. We'll move on now to another podcast. This is called The Diplomacy Cast. I recently discovered a pair of podcasters, Eric Mead and Nathan Barnes, who have 52 podcasts about the game. They've been around for a little while, 2015 doing this. They have a lot of fun on the air, and they cover a wide range of topics from ethics in the game to mid-game strategies for various nations. Since I've gotten back into diplomacy recently, and I'm now trying my first variant, a world diplomacy variant with 24 nations on Discord, I've been intrigued with the number of diplomacy variants out there. I've included the link to the podcast that focuses on many different variants. The tenth content creator that I'd like to focus on is a YouTuber named Chris Martin, and his channel is Dance Scholar. Check out his Diplomacy Academy videos. The one in particular that I would like to draw your attention to is called Improve Your Tactics, where he looks at one, getting better plans to pitch to your allies, two, becoming more persuasive in the game, three, learning better tactics, and four, learning to adapt. He's got a great delivery, and he illustrates his thoughts with practical sandboxed play. If you want to check out our work at Legendary Tactics, just click on the playlist below for our videos ranging from documentary-style after-action reports to tips and strategies on stabbing and using press through to a tournament guide for those who want to hit the big leagues. If these links were useful to you, please consider stabbing the like button and join the Legendary Tactics Alliance by subscribing. I'm sure there are all kinds of other great resources out there that I haven't been able to include in this list. Please post links to them in the comments and tell us what resources have helped you the most. In the words of Chris Martin, stab you soon.